If you're slated and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> and that's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Chicken and Ranch. I'm Ranch. This is Chicken. Hi. How you guys doing? Welcome back to Ranch and Chicken. All right. This week, we are going to present our top movies of 2017. Woohoo! The toughest list out of all of them for us movie junkies. We're huge film nerds. Absolutely. So we're going to start off with a list of wish we saw in theaters or just anywhere, but sadly we did not. Due to limited to release, ran out of time, a bunch of factors. Yeah. So here's our list. Coco, The Florida Project, Phantom Thread, Ignorant Goes West, Call Me By Your Name, Thor Ragna... Ragna... <laughs> How do you say that? Um, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. That one. Yeah. Loving Vincent, Mudbound... Blade Runner 2049, Atomic Blonde, It, Dunkirk, A Ghost Story, and Girl's Trip. Man, I really wish I saw these now. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, there's so much good. Why? Damn. And just like the songs, we're going to dive into our five honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Do you want to start? I'll start mine this time, yeah. And mine is on my phone, so I'm going to pull up my phone and I'm going to read them out here. Okay. So my honorable mentions are I, Tanya, CSEC, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and Captain Underpants. <laughs> All right. My honorable mentions are CSEC, Mother, The World of Tomorrow Part 2, The Greatest Showman, and Beauty and the Beast. I have a piece of paper this time. I don't know why. I just... I wanted to wing it, so I'm sorry go. in advance. Here's my piece of paper. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> my number 10 is Mother. I love how insane this movie gets. The tension this movie creates, it just crescendos in such a wonderful, wonderful way. Like, it gets su- it's super paranoia-inducing. It's really stressful. I love how... I love all the performances in this film. I love the way it's shot, where it's, like, so close to Jennifer Lawrence's face, either in front of or behind her, it creates such a claustrophobic atmosphere, especially feeling that feeling of just being trapped in the house this whole movie takes place in. Even though once you realize what this movie is pulling from for the film's structure, it's kind of annoying. It's, it's almost a little like deflating once you realize what this movie is pulling from. The bonkers balls to the wall third act of this movie is so crazy like, the reaction that we had in the theater for this, I will never forget. I will never leave my brain. So what works in this movie works so well. Like, the two, the first two acts are good. But the last act is incredible. And, like, that payoff is what gets it on the list. My number 10 goes to Baby Driver. Except for Kevin Spacey. You're not involved in this. No. Bye. Once you watch the first six minutes of it, you're going to want to watch the rest of it. It feels like a music video just on the big screen from start to finish. The music and the editing of it is so unique and so on point. I don't know how to say it. It's always on point. Like every little detail, those little tiny details of sound make this movie so good. And I'm really proud that Ansel had this chance to be part of this movie. I feel like he's really growing as an actor and I'm really excited to see what he has next because I'm a big fan of his and also it's his doppelganger. (laughs) <laughs> I absolutely love this movie, and I really want to watch it again soon. Yeah. So, my number nine is Baby Driver. Yay! There it is. Um, just the editing. The editing. The editing. The editing. The editing! It's unbelievable. Like, that's something Edgar Wright has always been known for, is that very flashy, very extremely well-timed editing. And I think he perfected that art in this movie. Like, even though this isn't, like, probably my favorite of his films, like, his 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 batting average is so high. Like, it's so incredible. His direction is is impeccable. The way, like, the choreography for this film front to back is, is fantastic. Oh. The sound editing yes. is crazy. Yeah, great action, great romance, 
great characters. It's fun. Yeah. Also, it me. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I made it. <laughs> My number nine. Look at itchies. <laughs> My number nine goes to Okja. Okja, I literally cried my eyes out after watching this. And you're lying to me if you haven't watched this and became a vegetarian for a couple days because that was 100% me. <laughs> I didn't want to eat anything afterwards. Um, but this one, it was just such this cute story, but also kind of like weird into the future sci-fi, I guess. Not really sci-fi, but... What kind of genre would you call it? A Bong Joon-ho movie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Just because all of his movies are like 12 genres crashing into each other at once. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how I categorize it, but the overall connection you made with this creature and the young girl just kind of what won the movie, too. If you didn't make that connection, I don't think you would be crying your eyes out the end of it but for me it did just watching her grow with this animal and love this animal and wanted to protect it throughout the whole entire movie and do whatever she could it was just such an impact and the overall cast was great the overall look of it I just I cried which is a very rare occasion if I cry after a movie I'm not like that that watch the teen movie and then just you know oh my god it was so sad like a movie has to hit me really good if I cry overall absolutely beautiful my number eight is ladybird yay i love the character interactions in this movie the, a, a character's emotions can be constantly shifting and changing not just from like scene to scene or act to act but like within a sentence or a sentence to sentence they can be like mad at someone one little thing will happen and they'll have a totally different emotion in that moment in time like it's that's such a wonderful dimension to add to this movie like, among many things, because Greta Gerwig, like, is so masterful in this film. Like, she handled the characters and she d directed this so fantastic. I love how, like, tightly packed this movie is, because it's only an hour and a half, but so much feels like it happened in this movie, which is down to, like, really dense writing, really great editing, so wonderfully handled, because in lesser hands, this could have been a really generic coming-of-age movie, but executed in the most masterful way possible, and it's brilliant my number eight goes to the shape of water yeah how gorgeous is this film to start with the shape of water definitely deserves every award that it will be given it is absolutely gorgeous and one thing that really made it stand up for me was the connection between octavia's octavia spencer's character and sally hawkins sally hawkins character of course, is mute if you haven't seen it or the trailer. And the connection she able to make this creature is absolutely brilliant. And I love Octavia's um, characters as well. She's also there just to support her and be there for her. And she knows some. She wants to rescue this creature, Sally's character. And she's like Octavia's just like, all right, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. You know. <laughs> Can I say too about the creature? He's he makes you fall. In you want to fall in love with the creature too. That's it's weird. You would think like, nah, I'm not gonna fall in love. No, you're gonna fall in love with it by the end of it. It's so good. I love the shape of water. It's so good. It's so good. My number seven is the big sick. This movie is so sweet. <laughs> it's so sweet. I love how Kumal Nanjani and Emily Gordon turned like how they met and like the the craziness that that included into a really adorable lovely romantic comedy mm -hmm. it's so sweet and it's so funny and once again the cast is so perfect kumal does a really good job of playing a version of himself and zoe kazan does a great job as as the female lead it's really sweet i want to watch it like a hundred more times i love yeah. it let's watch it again okay <laughs> pause the video bye <laughs> <laughs> My number seven goes to Three Billboards of Ebbe, Missouri. Frances McDolan character is someone you are obviously cheering for, but at the same time, you're kind of yelling at her. You're like, yeah, go ahead, burn that building down. Wait, wait, no, please don't do that. Wait, I changed my mind. She's kind of this powerful woman that is just wanting to do the right thing or wanting answers, and she's fighting for her daughter, and she's fighting for 
answers from this town. Like, why? Why why am I not receiving these answers? It's such a powerful story. It's The cast is absolutely brilliant together. The overall design and look of it is uh, just wonderful to look at and just very eye-catching. Yeah, I just absolutely love it. My number six is Get Out. If you told me three years ago one of the guys from Key and Peel would write and direct one of the best movies of the year and it was like a socially conscious, almost like politically charged horror thriller movie, I would laugh in your face. I would say you are crazy. Ha! I appreciate that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Please continue. <laughs> no, this movie is brilliant. All the ideas in this movie are insane. They're crazy. They're wonderful. This movie's script is so perfect, and the execution is so incredible. It's so insanely original. It's great. My number six goes to Star Wars The Last Jedi. Pew, 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 pew. pew. Okay. <laughs> I am a bad movie watcher person, film nerd lover, because before um, The Force Awakens came out, I only saw episode four, A New Hope. So I got yelled at a lot, but at the same time, people were like, no, don't watch the second one. Don't do so. So. There's a lot of movies in the world. Don't yell at me. <laughs> but The Force Awakens was good. Last Jedi was 10 times better. And this is a movie where everyone was like 50-50 about it. And I'm in the 50 that absolutely loved it. The sequences between like Kylo Ren and Rey was breathtaking. Just that silence made the whole theater just watch and listen. If you're listening that close for it. And that's that's one thing that really stood out about this movie was that sequence. For someone that wasn't watching Star Wars, you know, this one just came along and I'm like, this made me want to watch every Star Wars after it. I'm just really proud of it, really happy of it. There were a few things that I wanted to probably chop out, but overall, it was really cool. It's really, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. It's just it's a cool damn movie, you know? My number five, we're in the top five. You can't your hands. Five. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll learn numbers next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next lesson. Yeah. My number five is The Shape of Water. Guillermo del Toro. Stop. Stop making masterpieces. It's not fair to everyone else. It's not fair. Like, the fact that I can think of... Two other movies of his that I know I like more than this one, and this is in my top five of the year. Like, it's not fair. It's not fair. He needs to stop so everyone can ca play catch up. This movie is so gorgeously designed. The creature, particularly, is, has such a wonderful design, and he's acted out so well, as well as the whole cast really works together so well. The script is fantastic. The editing is fantastic. There's so many wonderful, like, really subtle subversions of, like, 1950s America in it. Mm -hmm. Like, the more it looks like a normal 50s movie, the uglier and grosser it feels, mm -hmm. which is really fascinating. It's not a big part of it, but it's such a nice, subtle little thing. And Sally Hawkins is perfect in this movie. So perfectly done. Like, there's a sequence in this movie towards the end involving her character that made me, like, cry really bad in the theater. I was just like, no, it's so good. It's so sweet. So ah, magical, that part. Magical. Magical. <laughs> I love how much of a nerd Guillermo del Toro is. We take such, like, different ideas that are more, normally, like, not considered, like, very highbrow, but does such great, moving, wonderful things with them. Love it. Number five for me goes to Get Out. Yes! The suspense is one thing that really won me over for this. And just like Adam said, I love how original this film is. It's very unique in its own way. The way they use just like a simple teacup in the beginning, you just see the teacup and you're like, all right, cool. And then we won't spoil it, but later on, the teacup is a pr predominant prop that is used throughout the story and it's so unique cast is absolutely brilliant the suspense killed me but just the story overall i think horror and thriller can be a very tricky tricky top uh genre because you can go straight into cheesy land not this film uh-uh 
this just went to oh crap what the frick is going to happen okay i'm going to watch this now keep going oh don't open that door damn (laughs) but i am so proud of this movie i want the dvd of it i'm gonna go steal adams be right back thank you jordan peele and bravo to the cast on get out my number four is the world of tomorrow part two the burden of other people's thoughts Here's another one where Don Hertzfeld, stop. Stop making masterpieces. <laughs> stop doing it. It's also, like, really not fair. Stop yelling at people, Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just jealous. The First World of Tomorrow was one of my favorite films of 2015, which is a really good year overall. And It's Such a Beautiful Day, which is his movie before that, is one of my favorite films from this decade. So the fact that this is, like, probably number, like, three, four, five in terms of his projects for favorites, and again... This high on the list, it, it speaks volumes of his abilities as an animator and as a, as like someone who can build a, a odd experimental animation but also have these really simple ideas at the core of them that are really relatable and really accessible. It's such a weird balance of like crazy accessible and crazy like avant-garde. It's, oh, it's nuts. Like his, his niece who plays the little girl mm-hmm. still is adorable and hilarious. The woman he has playing Emily older Emily is still perfect like it's just everything that worked from the first one taken in a new direction marvelous as you can see too a lot of these movies are crossing each other (laughs) because we he's my movie buddy of course yes (laughs) we basically saw all the same movies sans like one or two yeah (laughs) (laughs) but look look how interesting the list is though like where we place them though exactly they're very different placements right my number four goes to I, Tanya. Margot Robbie. Yes. And Allison Janney. Yes. She made me scared. <laughs> <laughs> Margot Robbie. I'm just so like impressed by her. Jumping from like Wolf of Wall Street to this. I'm like, girl, you are such a great actress. Like I, I, I love her so much. I was very impressed on how they handled this and how... They were able to take it and be so creative with it from the transitions to the breaking the fourth wall slash kind of it still feels like you're watching an interview because throughout it, you it's pretty much them being interviewed, but they're also breaking the fourth wall at random points. And those moments, I absolutely loved it. And it made me it made the characters develop even more as well. So you weren't just watching knowing that this person is Tanya, that person's Jeff, like It felt like a brand new person for this movie in a way. I'm really happy of how spot on, too, from the actual interviews in real life the characters played. Oh, what's that guy's name? The the bodyguard. The bodyguard? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I can't think of his name right now. Who replaced the actor of it? You freaking nailed he it. He nailed it. Oh, my God. God, he nailed it. <laughs> that was so good. But also... How spot on they did for the skating, too. So good. So spot on. And such an interesting story to bring to the big screen. And I am so happy with it. This is one I, I'm i going to watch again, for sure. It's so good. I love it, Tanya. Go it's check that so one good. out. You won't be disappointed. So my number three is Okja. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's Bong Joon-ho, like, once again... Like, doing in crazy genre, blendy, mishy, mashy mode without ever feeling like it's, like, going for too far disparate ideas. Like, it'll, it'll go from, like, goofy to socially conscious to horrifying to really politically charged to really warm and cute to really sad. It's, it's that crazy, like, spinning eight plates at once kind of trick that he keeps doing. And it's it's really wonderful. And it's such a great original idea they, they uses it for, and the relationship between the girl and the pig is so cute. And then, like, Tilda Swinton and Jake Gyllenhaal are insane. And then Paul Dano and Steven Yuen are, like, are so good in their roles, too. Holy crap, this movie. Holy crap, this movie. Holy crap. Number three for me goes to The Big Sick. How creative and sweet and interesting of a story Kumal was able to 
bring to life based on him. I absolutely love this so much and it worked, the script worked so well. That was probably the biggest thing too. And for someone who is a sucker for watching so many romantic comedies, this one is, you could easily just toss it up there with some of my favorites, like 51st Dates, how original and unique that one was. And also one of my favorites is When Harry Met Sally. I feel like I should have a DVD collection of just Big Sick and everything else too because it fits, It, but it also stands out on its own of how unique it is. The screenplay from start to finish is creative and funny and cute and you can't help but fall in love with these characters. Even when you feel their sadness, you feel their sadness. When you feel their angeriness, you feel it. When you feel the love, you feel the love. And being able to connect with these emotions Whoa, <laughs> that's all my dying right now. What was that? Basic two. <laughs> <laughs> but being able to connect with the emotions really wins it over. And I absolutely loved it. I, I really want to watch it again now. <laughs> it's sweet. It's so sweet. It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> my number two is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes. Oh, I love everything. Everything, everything, everything about this movie. I love everything in this. I I cannot believe. I, I like Force Awakens and Rogue One. I think they're pretty good. I cannot believe just how much of, how much this elevated from those movies. Yes. It's crazy. Like all the ideas it has is, are great. I think the pacing is actually pretty flawless. Um, I, the acting, which was, I think, the best part of Force Awakens, is even better. Like, it's so wonderful. I love what they, how all the characters have evolved. I love what they did with Luke Skywalker. I love what they did with um, Leia. I think she has, this might be the best showing of Leia has had in any Star Wars movie. Rest in peace, I love Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. You ended on such, on the highest possible note. I think this movie takes such huge, crazy, weird risks and does so many new original things with Star Wars. But at the same time, this is the most Star Wars feeling movie out of all these movies. It feels like Rogue One and Force Awakens. I can't help but take a little bit that they're fan, they kind of feel like really, really expensive fan films. This is a Star Wars movie through and through. It's kind of weird that this is the only one of the movies come out so far or the ones planned where there hasn't been a major change in the creative team. Like that, they didn't change any writers or directors or anything with them. So this makes me think this is either the most confident statement they have made in the Star Wars films yet, or Ryan Johnson just got away with murder and like was able to like sneak his ideas through like every filter possible. I really hope it's the first one. It could be either one. <laughs> we'll see what happens with the next movies if like they they build on this or try to back back off of a lot of them because mm-hmm. it could go either way. But no matter what happens, I'm elated, ecstatic, and so happy this movie exists. So. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> the Porgs! How can I forget about those? Oh, porgs! <laughs> yes, the Porgs! That's why this movie's great. <laughs> Original, creative, wonderful ideas. Got away with murder. Yes, the Porgs! <laughs> <laughs> My number two goes to Wonder Woman. Finally, we get this movie, and it stomps on every single superhero action movie excuse me sorry out there patty jenkins you are my hero thank you for making me feel so powerful make thank you for letting me look up to a character like this and feel strong as a woman and feel just like i can take on the world and i can take i can be this superhero and that's just the impact she's made in everyone i wonder woman is fantastic Gal Gadot was such a great choice. She is so sassy in real life, too, and so such a great actress, and I'm really excited to see where she's going to go as well. Sorry, Josh Whedon, if you haven't seen that he released a script of his version of it. Jesus Christ. God bless you, Patty Jenkins, for taking that over, because that would have been a hot mess. It wasn't showing off women as these sexy things you know you toss them in a movie they have to wear like just bras and underwear you know let me dance around on screen this was no i'm gonna wear this armor because i'm about to kick some ass 
I absolutely love this. I love the impact it's made on me, impact on my nieces, impact on the community, impact on everyone. I I love this. I'm excited for the sequel because it's going to crush everyone too as well. It took a woman, a superhero woman, to help save DC. Way to go. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then roll it into the next one. My number one is Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> I didn't know you changed it. <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of the MCU. I'm a huge fan of superhero films in general. This is in like my top three superhero films ever, period. Possibly number one. Like, it's, my God, this movie. Like, I can't believe how moving, how poignant, how lovely, how cinematic and adrenaline pumping this movie is. It's... It's incredible. It is incredible. It is such a wonderful re- representation of like why superheroes matter, why these stories matter. It's one of the most perfectly executed versions of this story. Even though like people have seen the comparisons between like how there's similarities between like su- Superman, like Man of Steel and the first Avenger and Thor, like it it takes idea elements and ideas from all of those films, but it's doing something so unique and so much its own and such a an execution of it and like and it's crazy how like leaps and bounds above um the other the other dc films is this. i've seen batman v superman i've seen man of steel this movie is leaps and bounds and miles miles above the, those those movies like even though even though there are somehow like ideas from those films that make it into this one it executes them masterfully and yeah like the no man's land sequence oh. i want that scene set to woman by kesha I want to see that happen. <laughs> like, that's basically what this is. I am a mother effing woman! <laughs> oh, man. Like, even the last 15 minutes of this film, which a lot of people will kind of hate on. Like, I even really like those, with, with one minor exception in there. Like, the last little, one little leg in there, when, like, the, the, he basically looks like, then, like, the final guy looks like the final boss of a video game. That's the one moment where I, I'm not as crazy about it. But, like, otherwise, that's that. I love a lot of that too. The acting is amazing. The writing, the direction, like, holy crap, Patty Jenkins. Holy crap. You master, you freaking mastered this. And just like with The Last Jedi, like, we might never get another good DC movie. We might not get any more good Wonder Woman movies. Although I doubt that because Patty Jenkins is back in, on the realm. As long as Patty Jenkins is there, I'm confident in this. Right. And this one I know, like, unlike with Star Wars, I know she got, th- got this all through despite DC. Right. Like, so the fact that, because I was really worried about this movie before it came out. I was so worried. Like, yeah. I told you a bunch. Like, I want the movie to be good so bad. It's probably going to be awful. It's probably going to be bad. It's probably better than nice. the other ones. It's probably going to be bad, though. The fact that this movie exists makes me so ecstatic and hopeful. And if it, it's so, God, thank you, Patty Jenkins. Thank you, Gal Gadot. Everyone involved, thank you so much. It's unbelievable. My number one goes to Lady Bird. Thank you, Greta Gerwig. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. For a woman in this, wanna, I want to be more in this industry, watching this really just inspired me more. I absolutely adore coming-of-age films. They are, it's my one of my favorite, favorite genre just to begin with. And watching her bring this unique loving mother daughter coming of age powerful woman i'm gonna stand on my own and be called ladybird if i want to kind of movie it was such an inspiration and i just fell in love with these characters and even all these side characters you wouldn't think you would by the end of it like you just feel for the dad so much and you just you're cheering for him you're cheering for the mom you're cheering for the daughter you're cheering for everybody the quick snappy the script of it was absolutely beautiful the quick those moments she uh lady bird had with her best friend oh those are so oh, that's... great yes that's the second mistake she made <laughs> she only made one mistake but she was 19 two mistakes <laughs> oh just the feels 
of this movie and the connections you make with it. I love this movie so much. I just wanted to watch it again really badly right now. Oh, this cast is just beautiful in it and the dancing when they're, they had this big prom scene and the nun. Yes. Oh my gosh, the nun is just so, like, you would think, because it's based around her being in the Catholic school, you would think, like, the nun would be very strict and stuff, but the nun and Lady Bird just have this connection, and you're just like, you fall in love instantly with them. Oh, I love it so much, and I didn't expect that, but that was so great. But from start to finish, I just connect it with the story, and I connect it, it reminded me of back in high school, it reminded me you know, I wanted to call my mom afterwards and be like, mom, I love you and stuff. This is like <laughs> all the fights you had, just you'd like let it go. It's go see this with your mom, go see it with your friends, go see it with family, go see this movie, go see it. Thank you. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this movie. Top of the year for me, one of my favorites probably of all time now, just I absolutely love it. And can we please watch this again? Okay. <laughs> Real quick, also remember <laughs> The football coach becomes the theater director. Oh my, oh my god. god! He's so funny and adorable. You rock, Greta. Thank you so much. We're cheering for you. Yeah. Yay, Lady Bird. Yay, Yay number one movie. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we are going to go rewatch all these movies now that we really want to watch. Yes. <laughs> and Marathon! Here we go. And we will see you guys next week on Chicken and Ranch. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.